Good afternoon, good evening. Um, welcome to the People's Law School put as put on by the Iowa State Bar Association. My name is Nathan Blake. I'm uh, a deputy attorney general for the Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller, uh, who, who sends his regrets that he couldn't be here tonight to introduce uh, our, our, our main presenter, the star of the evening, our expert in consumer protection, uh, Al Perales, who will be speaking most of the time. But I wanted to give uh, a quick introduction of, of what the office does and how we're here to kind of serve Iowans um, and, and why this is such a priority for our office. Um, Tom Miller has been attorney general for, uh, well, since he's not here, I'll, I'll just say it. He's been attorney general longer than I've been alive. Uh, he was first elected in 1978 and has, has served uh, with ever since with maybe like a four-year gap uh, in between. But he really, you know, the attorney general does a lot of important things for the state. He, the attorney general uh, defends lawsuits against the state, provides advice to all the rest of the state government, and uh, handles all the criminal appeals for the state, provides assistance to crime victims. Um, but if you ask Tom Miller, I think what his passion and, and what his priority is, uh, it, and it, it is this that we're talking about tonight, it's consumer protection, protecting consumers, making sure that the people of Iowa are protected from, from people that might otherwise take advantage of them. And he has been a leader in this area across the country. Uh, he's, he's spent uh, decades really leading um, uh, lawsuits against tobacco companies, against Microsoft, um, uh, standing up for Iowans with the national mortgage um, settlement. And as you'll hear tonight, one of the passions that he has and, and one of the priorities for our office is making sure that Iowans understand their rights and hopefully understand some helpful tips to avoid being scammed uh, and being taken advantage of by, by bad folks out there. Um, I really want to uh, express some, some special gratitude to ISBA, uh, the Bar Association, who's putting on the, this series of, of programs. And, you know, I'm here in Des Moines, but I know that there are people all around the state who are able to turn in, tune in, which I think is, is great. You know, the law can be kind of opaque and confusing, um, but this initiative, I think, is, is, is phenomenal. So you everybody, uh, lawyers and non-lawyers, can understand a little bit more about the law. And tonight, hopefully, you'll understand uh, a little bit more about some of the ways that Iowa law protects you uh, as a consumer, but also uh, some of the things that you can do to protect yourself. And we have tonight uh, one of our star investigators, uh, Al Perales, who's uh, engaging. And I hope you ask him lots of tough questions because he's good at answering them. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for paying attention. And I'll turn it over to Al. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my, again, my name is Al Perales, and um, I'm very, very thankful to be here today. Um, I, I've been with the office for about 13 years. Um, I feel very grateful for, for the work that I get to do. Um, I feel that I get to do God's work and, and, and make some wrong things right. So thank you. Thank to the uh, Iowa Bar Association for the opportunity to be here today. I, I thought I'd start out with something funny. It, it's always good to laugh, isn't it? Unfortunately, there was a, this, this plane and it was ready to crash. And there were four passengers and only three parachutes. The first passenger was a heart surgeon. And he said, my patients need me. So he grabbed that first parachute and jumped off. The second passenger was a rocket scientist. And he said, my country needs me. I'm one of the smartest men in the world. So he grabbed the second parachute and jumped off. The third passenger, the third passenger was Pope John Paul. And he told the fourth passenger, a 10 year old boy scout, he said, son, I'm old and frail. I don't have much time left. You go ahead and take that last parachute. And that 10 year old Boy Scout responded, sir, that's okay. The smartest man in the world just took off with my backpack. <laughs> and I, I like to tell that, that joke there, that small little joke, because one of the themes that you're gonna hear today, and I can't say it enough, I can't say it enough, is to double check, to double check that before you sign on that dotted line, or before you agree to something over the, on the phone, or agree to something when someone knocks at your door, 
or respond to that emergency text that your account's been breached, that you double check. And today what we wanna do, we wanna do is, is deputize. Everybody who's listening to this broadcast, everyone who's here, we are here to deputize you as a fraud fighter. And I'm really hoping that today, after you leave today, that you'll learn something. I, I really hope that. But more importantly, my hope is that you'll take something home and share it with somebody. It, it, it's sad to think, I grew up in the um, uh, mid 70s, early 80s, and, and, and it it's, amazes me how much life has changed. How much life has changed from, from, from answering the phone. I remember when I was a little kid and the phone would ring and I would run to answer the phone and there was some excitement. It could be a friend, it could be a family member. And it's very, very sad that today that's not the case. There's people out there that are out there that are focusing on you. And we have found that over 50% of the calls that come to your home are either a robot call or a fraudulent call. And it's sad. And it, what, what makes me very, very sad is that there are people that wake up every day to lie, cheat, and steal. And they're focusing on you. And what amazes me even more is that they don't even use a gun. They use a phone. They use a phone to get a hold of everybody in here. And what amazes me even more is that they use words to create a situation, a situation that is not true at all, but it seems so real. And every day, folks are losing hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Every day, good, hardworking Iowans. And it's sad. It's a sad state. And, and what we're hoping today is, is, is maybe that you'll, you'll learn some tools. And again, when you leave today, you'll be an Iowa fraud fighter. Um, one of the um, things that people always ask me is, Al, why do they focus on Iowans? Well, wh why do they pick on us? And what, what, some things that come to mind is, is basically time and money. I mean, many older Iowans have worked hard all their lives. They, they, they have a small nest egg, and that scammer would like to do nothing more than to get his hands on that money. And many Iowans are available. You know, they, they'll answer the phone, and they know that. Also, they know that older Iowans, unfortunately, there are many older Iowans that are isolated and lonely, and they don't get out as much. And believe me, in my line of work, I've learned that that is the perfect storm for a scammer, to find somebody who is lonely or isolated, because believe me, they welcome a call. They, they welcome um, a knock on the door. It, it reminds me of a, uh, um, we, I was working on an investigation here in Des Moines, Iowa, and we had a gentleman um, who was involved with Publishers Clearinghouse. And he lived in a little studio apartment. And I remember being there and there were boxes that all over his house. And there was just a little trail to the bathroom, a little trail to his seat by the TV. And he said this, he said, one of my most exciting parts of the day is when I get to walk to the mailbox to see I've won, if I've won the grand prize. And that made me sad. And that made me sad that, that he was lonely. He was isolated. And here he was presented with something that he was gonna win or he was close to winning. And if he would buy just a little, little bit more, he would win that grand prize. But of course that never happened. Older Iowans are also targets because they come from a great generation. A generation where, where trust and hope and truth and a handshake meant something. And scammers know that. So what they do is they take all that good and they twist it around to use it against you. They also know that older Iowans are less likely to report fraud. Uh, we, we've seen that many Iowans, we find that many times they don't even know they've been defrauded. Sometimes we find out that many Iowans don't know who to call. They don't know who to contact. But more often than not, we find that there are many older Iowans out there that are ashamed and don't say anything. Because in fear, in fear of, of their son or daughter saying, Dad, Mom, I'm going to have to take that phone away from you. 
uh, you're not, I'm gonna have to take that account away from you. And there's a lot of fear there, so they don't say anything. I mean, last year alone, $1.5 billion with a B was stolen from, from people all over the United States, according to the FTC. Another reason why I believe older Iowans are targets is, is because as we get older, we have changes going on, right? We, 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 as we get older, and there's a, a professor at the uh, Iowa State uh, University of Iowa, um, Dr. Denberg, and she found in her studies that as we get older, our frontal lobe, where all our decision-making happens, that it atrophies, it weakens as we get older. And it's just part of life. It just happens. Making older Iowans more vulnerable, making them more vulnerable to, to believe something that is not true. Um, I, I've, you know, why do scams work? Why do they work? One of the things that come to mind is I honestly believe that scammers understand human nature. They understand human nature. I mean, when you think about it, seriously, when you think about it, how many of us would love to win the lotto or a sweepstakes? How many? I'm raising my hand because I've dreamt about it. I've thought about it. I, I've thought about, oh my gosh, what would I do with this money? Or I could help this, or I could buy this, or I could do all these good things. And they know that. And how many of us, if we're in trouble, we get a speeding ticket or a parking ticket? How, how many of us want to take care of it and, and, and just put it behind us so, so we want to take care of it and address it? Well, they know that. And how many of us, if somebody's in trouble, a family member, a friend, how many of us would want to lend a helping hand? I think we all would. And what they do is that they create a situation. They create a situation to get you to act. And during that situation, what they want to do is they want to raise your emotions. Whether it's fear, whether it's excitement, or whether it's a situation that pulls at your heartstrings. And, and while you're, you know, we all know how it feels to be excited or to be very, very, very scared. And, and you know, I, I think of, of, of a little kid getting all excited and, 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 and wanting to um, act or, or do something right away. They know that. And, and they'll, again, create a situation that's so strong. And I'm telling you, it's so strong that while you're going through it, all you have is tunnel vision. All you can see is, is the light at the end of the tunnel, not being in trouble with the IRS or helping your grandchild out or winning that big sweepstakes. All the while, there's all these red flags that are going on, but you don't pay attention to them because that situation is so strong. In psychology, there, there's a theory called the fundamental attribution error. And in layman terms, what it, what, what it, what it says is that we as individuals underestimate the power of the situation. I can't tell you how many times people have said, you know, Al, I would never fall prey to a scam. I'm smarter than that. I, I would be able to pick one out right away. And I really, I really feel in my experience that you need to be careful about saying that because these scams are so strong and so good that, that, that I have found that I've gotten calls from folks that said, I know better. Or I've taught my children not to fall prey to a scam. And here I'm calling you. I've fallen prey to a scam. Scams are strong. And again, they seem so real. In fact, uh, 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 a story that comes to mind, we had a gal come in our, our office uh, probably about two years ago. And she was in tears. And she was with her husband. She had been on Facebook. And while she was on Facebook, on the, on the left-hand side, it said that she had won a, a big prize millions of dollars with a car and she got so excited it said that she needed to call this number and she called the number and again they're good at what they do they made her feel so good they got her excited and with many scams i found that usually it opens the door for them to ask for vital information well you're going to win all this money so we're, we're going to we're going to need your social security number because we're going to have to report this to the irs and and, and we're going to need your your bank account number because we're gonna wire the money to your bank. 
And they asked her for all that information. And she lost $70,000, $70,000. And she was in tears. And her husband was there. He was very loving and supportive. So I, I had her sit there and, and, and she, I had her write a narrative, a narrative of, of what happened regarding the situation. And she said this, and, and I'll never forget it. She said, as I was going through the scam, it felt so real. But now as I'm writing it, it seems so silly. And it's true. Uh, 2020 vision is, 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 you know, uh, while you're going through it, it feels so real. And, and she thought she was going to win this grand prize. And it was nothing but smoke and mirrors, nothing but smoke and mirrors. So again, if there's one thing that I want you to remember is that if you ever, scams come in all shapes and sizes. They can come from a knock on the door, an email, a text, a phone call, a postcard. Again, a knock, a knock on the door. But there's one thing that I've learned. There's one thing that I've learned is that, again, scams are very strong. It's a very strong situation. So if you ever, ever come confronted with a situation and there's fear or there's excitement or there's a situation that pulls at your heartstrings and they're asking for money right now, it's a scam. It's definitely a scam. Some of the scams that I'm seeing out there right now, um, primarily uh, in, in the office, uh, probably the number one is, is the IRS scam still, the IRS scam. And in this one here, they give you a call and they use fear, right? They use fear. They call you and they tell you that you're late on your taxes or there's a problem with your taxes. And if you don't fix them right now, there's going to be a warrant out for your arrest. It's a little scary. And, and again, very, very, very strong. And again, they, they, they use official sounding names. This is Sergeant Johnson, or this is Sergeant uh, Kaminga, uh, badge number 5431, or whatever it is. They're good at making you think it's real. And they try to do whatever they can to bring validity to their scam. For example, you get a call from the IRS on your caller ID, it may say IRS, and it, and it comes from Washington, D.C., but that doesn't mean it's true. A scammer can put whatever they want on your caller ID. The key is, is that they're asking for money, and they're using fear to try to get you to act. Another scam that we're seeing more and more lately, I, I believe, in my opinion, is, is probably surpassed the IRS scam. Is, is the social security number scam. It's very similar in that one, they use fear again. And, and they tell you that your social security number was used in a crime in another state. I just got a call from a gentleman today and he told me that he received that call and they told me that his social security number was, was found in a stolen car in Texas. And with that social security number, they opened some fraudulent bank accounts and there were drugs and money. And if he didn't take care of this right now, they would be out there to arrest him. Now you can imagine an older Iowan who relies wholeheartedly on his or her social security check every month, right? And getting a call like this. And, 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 and the fear of not getting that money. And again, wanting to fix it, wanting to do whatever it takes to fix it. And he didn't fall prey to it, but many people do, many people do. And you know what, 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 what surprises me more and how strong these calls are is um, with the IRS scan that we just spoke about had a gentleman come in and he, uh, he got taken by the IRS scam and they called him and they scared him and they told him that they were going to arrest him and that he needed to pay $20,000. But here's the thing. I asked him how he paid and he paid with Apple iTunes cards. 
And when you think about it, it's like, I, I, I almost chuckled. I said, would you ever think that the federal government would ask for payment in Apple iTunes cards? It doesn't make sense. They never would. And outside looking in, it's like, okay, the federal government would never ask for iTunes cards. Uh, a gift card is payment. I mean, that's what it says on the, on the card. It's a gift card. It's not for payment. It's a gift card. And he went out and bought $20,000 worth of iTunes card, scratched the back off, and gave it to the caller. The, the, the United States government would never do that. But again, that's how strong these, these, these calls are and these scams are. They're, they're very, very strong. Uh, another scam that I'm seeing out there is um, another one of fear. And, and this one's called the um, jury duty scam. And this in the jury duty scam, they give you a call and they tell you, this is the Polk County Sheriff's Department. And uh, yesterday you were scheduled for jury duty and you failed to show up. And because you failed to show up, um, there's a fine and you'll have to pay that fine today. And if you don't pay, what? There's gonna be a warrant out for your arrest and we're gonna come and get you. And many times they'll say Polk County Sheriff's Department right on your caller ID. Again, a law enforcement would never request, would never threaten you, number one, would never tell you there's gonna be a warrant out for your arrest and they would never say you need to pay now or else. They would never do that. But again, I can't tell you how many folks fall prey to this because of fear. Another fear is the mid-American energy scam. And in this one, they call you, again, they use fear and they tell you that you're late on a payment, that, that, that you missed a payment um, or a payment didn't apply. And then if you don't pay right now, if you don't pay this instant, usually with a gift card, a Google gift card, an iTunes gift card, that they're gonna shut your power off and they're gonna shut it off today. And again, very, very, very prevalent scam. Uh, a scam that I'm seeing more and more, um, I call it the Facebook grant scam. In the Facebook grant scam, you're on Facebook and you have your friends, you have your friends on Facebook and you get a message from one of your friends that says, hey Al, I got this grant for $20,000. Here's a picture of the money. And, and when, when, when I talked to the guy, when I talked to the gentleman who called me, who told me I had won, I had been approved for this grant, I saw your name. Your name was on the list. So you need to call them and, and, and get your grant. And the person believes that, oh my gosh, that's my buddy, Gary. Gary, Gary just won that money. So they call and they talk to that person. And again, the scam starts. You've been approved for a grant. Hey, you know, um, congratulations. And people call me with that scam. And I say, hey, did you talk to your friend, Gary? Did you call him by phone? Oh, no, 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 no. He, he just he just texts me. He, he sent a message. And I said, well, if you were to take the time and call him by phone, he would tell you, I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't send you that message. The scammer broke into Gary's Facebook and then sent messages to all his friends. With that message that they've been that their friend is approved for a grant. And again, this one, this one here is pretty prevalent right now. Uh, another scam out there, um, of course, is the grandparent scam. And in, in the grandparent scam, um, I, I kind of find this amazing because many times the scammer doesn't even do any homework. They may just go through the phone book and find Edna's, find Albert's, find just older sounding names. And they call. And they say, Grandma, Grandpa. And the older Iowan says, Bobby, Susie. And right then they have a connection. 
Yeah, yeah, Grandma, it's me, it's me, Bobby. And I'm down here in Texas. I'm down here with my buddy Tony, and we're we were down here. Um, uh, just we got away for a little bit, and he got in an accident, and he had a little bit of marijuana in his car. And he got arrested and they were treating him really bad, grandma. So I swung at the officer and he punched me in the nose. So I might not sound the same. And this is a key. Don't tell mom. Don't tell dad. I want to take care of this by myself. And the scam keeps going. Can, can, can you talk to the, to the police officer? And then I think the scammer probably just changes his voice. It says, this is Officer Johnson or whatever. Your grandson's in trouble. He's in big trouble. And if, and if you don't pay this fine, he's going to be in jail for a week. And again, very, very strong scam. Very, very strong. Some stories. Had a, had a gal who fell prey to the scam. And it's kind of silly when you think about it. I'm amazed at the hoops and things that scammers will ask you to do and people just do them without questioning. So this gal, she fell prey to a scam and it was $10,000 she was supposed to send to get her son out of, out of jail. And they asked her, we want you to send it cash. And when you send it cash, we want you to put it in a, in a magazine and just spread out the money in a magazine. Then we want you to put it in a box and seal the box and put happy birthday. And I, some, some folks have even, even had to um, wrap the box and, and then they send the money off. Now, isn't it isn't amazing when you think about it, think, okay, I get called by law enforcement and they tell me to get cash to put it in a, in a, in a, in a magazine and send the money. It just doesn't seem right. But again, I can't say it enough. These scams feel so real that while they're going through them, they got your emotions. All that older Ion can think of is, is helping this grandson Bobby out and doing whatever she can to help Bobby out. And including doing something that we see is silly. But while she was going through it, again, it felt so real. In her case, she made a mistake writing the, the address down. So I went to New York and the U.S. Postal Service got it. And the U.S. Postal Service gave it to the New York State Police and they contacted me. And we were able to get that money back to the older Iowa when she was out of the Quad Cities in, in, uh, in, in the eastern part of the state. And we had another guy, same thing, same thing. He sent money in a box, put happy birthday, and sent it FedEx. He sent it FedEx. And when he sent it, the address that the scammer used, which is usually what they do, they'll find abandoned houses, or they'll find houses that no one lives in, and they'll, they'll put that address on there, and they'll wait in the bushes or wait in their car, Wait for the FedEx guy to drive up and put the box up. Then they'll run up and get the box and take the money. But luckily, the FedEx guy saw the house. It was boarded up and said, you know what? Something just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right that someone would, would send a package here. And he ended up taking the package with him and, and called the gentleman, and he got his money back. But I'm telling you, those are very, very lucky stories because that does not happen usually. The money's gone. It's gone. And there's one thing that I've learned, too, is that a scammer will always ask you for money in ways that there's no defenses for you. We tell folks, if you're going to go buy something, if you're going to pay for something online, always use a credit card. Because with credit cards, you have safeguards and defenses to protect you in case something doesn't go wrong. So a scammer will ask for you to wire money. They'll ask for a gift card. The, 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 they'll ask for just straight out cash or a check in ways that you have no defenses. Another scam that I see out there, which is probably, in my opinion, the most evilest scam, it's the romance scam. 
the sweetheart scam. Again, as I mentioned earlier, there are many, many older Iowans that are lonely. There are many older Iowans that are isolated. And I'm telling you, we all know what it feels like to fall in love. We all know what it feels like to, to be giddy inside and, and, and for hope for the future for, for you and a loved one. We all know what that feels like. And you can imagine scammers out there looking for widowed, lonely people, and they contact them. And they, they'll, they'll find an older Iowan, a gentleman, that's out there just on Facebook, or he may be on Match.com. I find that more and more older Iowans are using social media, using computers. And that scammer will contact that older Iowan with a picture of a young gal, a very nice looking gal. And they'll connect, like send an email or send, hey, I like your smile. They'll try to break the ice. Oh, thank you. And then it starts. Then they'll start this communication. And in a little while, oh, I like you. Hey, can, can, can we get out of, out of uh, match.com? Can we use this other app? I, I, I really like you and I, I just wanna get to know you a little bit better. And again, they start communicating. They start telling, I love you. I wanna be with you. I wanna get married. But the tall tale sign is they start asking for money. And they start asking for money over and over and over again. For a woman, for a, for a, an older Iowan who's a, who's a female, the scammer will will get a a, 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 a maybe a, a gray haired guy, veteran, military, and do the same thing. And again, it's a very ugly scam because I mean you can you can imagine how when you're in a scam, and you just believe it with all your heart and you believe it with your mind that you've won something or that you're in trouble, this one here is really strong because you, you love somebody and you've connected with this person. You, you may have even talked to them and they give you a reason why, why they need money. We had a gal come into our office and, and she had lost $125,000 and she still believed when she was in our office that he was real and that he loved her but she just knew something wasn't right. So she came and, and, and we, we talked about it. She, 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 I said, hey, where's he from? Well, he says he's a, he's a doctor. He's a doctor in Nigeria, but he's from Des Moines. He's originally from Des Moines. Here's his address. So she gave us his address. She gave me the address. And I said, okay. So we went to that house and we kind of jotted some things down, you know, there was a, a yellow Volkswagen Jetta in the, in, in, the, in the parking, in the driveway. There was a Weber grill in the back. The, I think the, the, the um, curtains were a certain color, I can't recall. And we just wrote some things down. She also said that he was a doctor. So I said, next time you talk to this guy, ask him what a patella is. Just ask him, ask him what a patella is. So, so we got all our information and she went and, asked, and talked to the guy and she asked him what a patella was. And she called me back and I said, well, did you ask him? He said, yeah. Did he know what a patella was? And she said, no. And I said, because he's not a doctor. <laughs> he's not a doctor. And, and even she asked him about some of the things in the house and he couldn't answer them. And luckily in her situation, in her situation, she was about ready to retire. She was about ready to retire and she couldn't. She had to work another two years. And as far as I know, she didn't tell her children. But lucky for her, she had, she owned a home. And in her insurance, her homeowner's insurance, there was a provision for theft. And we had to go file a police report and all that stuff. And she was able to turn that in and she was able to recover $80,000 of that 125,000 that she lost. So that was, a, that was a good thing. But again, I can't tell you. I just talked with a guy today. He, he lost $40,000. And, and I, I wish, I wish, really wish that, 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 that everyone who's listened today could, could be in my seat 
for a day and, and listen to, to Iowans many times in tears, many times crying because they've lost all this money. I mean, I think just a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, um, I don't know why, but I had $1,600 in this bag of mine. And um, I thought it was in a certain place and it wasn't. And I couldn't find it. And I was, uh, I had friends coming into to town. We were gonna go to the farmer's market. We were just gonna ride bikes through the downtown. And, and before coming down here, I was gonna grab my money and I couldn't find my bag. And I thought someone, I mean, I, I first, I just thought someone had stolen it. And I had my daughter check my room. I had, I checked both cars, nothing. So that whole day, even though it was a fun day, it was a fun day. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I lost $1,600. I just thought it is what it is. But I think of these folks, these Iowans, these good working, hire, uh, har, these hardworking Iowans, they don't lose $1,600. They lose $20,000, $50,000, $100,000, $200,000. $200, I talked to folks up in Northwest Iowa last week, $450,000 they lost. And how did the scammer approach them? How did he, how did he get a hold of them? Through Instagram. It's an app. It's, they got a hold of them through Instagram. Or, or, I'm sorry, it wasn't Instagram. It was um Words with friends, through words with friends, they were, and uh, through that game, I guess you're able to, to communicate and text. And the scammer started texting with them and told them that they, they were, he had an inheritance and, and, and that if they could help out, they seemed like good people. And they lost $450,000. Again, it's sad. It's very, very, very sad that every day there are people that are losing money by things that are not true. Things that are just nothing but smoke and mirrors. And, and, and I can't say it enough to double, double check. So I wanna provide you with 10 tips, 10 tips to protect yourself from falling prey to a scam. And, and I think they're in the little booklets on the, on the first page there. Um, number one, we always tell folks, if you don't recognize the number, don't answer the call. It's very, very simple. It, we tell people, folks, that it's okay not to be Iowa nice. Hang up on them. Uh, if, you, if you answer the phone, just hang up on them. Don't answer the call. Because many times, if you answer the call, it could be a robocall. It could be a computer calling you. And that computer has one task, and that is to find good working numbers. So when you answer the phone, when you say hello, when you hit nine or, or one to get taken off the list, believe me, all you're doing is, is, is putting your number on a list that's gonna be sold and you're gonna get even more calls. And it's an epidemic. I, I, wish, I wish I could tell you, you know, you wanna, you wanna get rid of these robocalls? Hit star five, five, pound, pound, and that will take care of it. I wish I could tell you that, but that, that's not true. That, that's not true. I mean, scammers, the, the, your best defense is by not answering any call that you don't recognize. We always, I always tell people that if it's not your brother Bobby or if it's not your sister Susie or Dr. Anderson's office, don't answer the call. Just don't. I can't tell you I'm, on my phone, I can't tell you how many times I see a, a, a number and I'm like, I don't know it and I don't answer it. But there are times and I'm guilty. I'm like, oh, I think I know who that is. And I answer it and it's a scam call. And I kick myself in the butt because I'm just like, oh, here I go and, 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 and preach to people not to, not, not to answer calls. And here I did it. And I know that and shortly after I answer that call, I started getting more calls. So don't answer any call that you don't recognize. Number two, never give out personal financial or personal information over the phone. I never. I, I, again, I talked to a gal today. And she gave her last four digits of her social security number. She gave her address to, to somebody that she didn't even know. So, so never give out. Now, if you're talking to somebody, let's just say, for example, you're talking to your, your bank manager or your bank teller that you've talked to on many occasions, and they may ask for some vital information. Of course, 
you know, if, if you initiated the call, but if you get an unsolicited call from somebody telling you that they're with the, your bank or telling you and they're asking for information or they're with Medicare, Medicare would never call you, but they call you from Medicare asking for your social security number. Never give that out. Number three, never wire funds or pay with gift cards. As I mentioned, it says gift cards for a reason because it's for a gift. They're not supposed to be used for payment, but that's what scammers want. They want to create the impression that you can pay with a, with a gift card, but they know that when they do that, there's no safeguards for you. And it's really hard to, to catch the same thing with wiring money, never wire money to someone that you don't know. Number four, and this is important, always the, resist the pressure to act quickly and act secretly. Believe me, when the scammer has your attention, he, he wants to get in and get out as soon as he can. So, so he, he, he'll want to act quickly and he'll want you to keep it a secret. For example, the, uh, the sweepstakes scams from, from folks that I've talked that, that have been falling prey to the sweepstakes. They tell them that, oh, we're contacting high, the local high V, we're ca contacting WHO TV and the local radio station. And we're gonna do this big deal for you. We're gonna have the balloons and everything. We don't want you to tell anybody be, be, because we're gonna, we're gonna do this big deal and we want everybody just knowing that day, not before. And again, they, they build up that excitement and they're so good at what they do. So always resist the pressure to act quickly and act secretly. Number five, don't always believe your ID, your caller ID, or, or believe official sounding names. You know, this is Officer Johnson. This is Sergeant Johnson. Uh, this is Special Agent Smith. You know, and even on your caller ID, I hate to say, you can't always trust your caller ID. Um, just last year, the Newton area got hit with the jury duty scam. And, and hundreds of people were taken by the jury duty scam on each one of their, the people that I spoke with on the caller ID. It, it, it said the, the county, it said the county sheriff's department on it to make, to bring validity that, oh my gosh, it's coming from, 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 the, from the county sheriff's department. And then they, had a, they left a message and, and you, got, you had to call back. And I called it back. And the message to the sheriff's department was the exact message that was on the real sheriff's department with the little changes. It said, if you're calling about the jury duty scam, press four. And then, and then they would, you would connect with someone and they try to scam you. Number six, never pay for a prize. If you get a call and you've won a prize, you've won a trip and you have to pay all these fees, all these insurance, all this stuff up front, don't fall for it. I always tell people if you have to pay, it's not a prize. Number seven, always deal locally, always deal face to face. And the reason I put this one in is because many older Iowans are shopping online or they're using Facebook, I'm sorry, uh, Craigslist. They're using eBay to buy cars, to buy tractors, to buy whatever, apartment or to look for an apartment. And what a scammer does is he'll grab a nice looking car or a tractor or even an RV, grab the pictures, make his own little for sale ad, and he'll put it on a really good price. And he'll say, I'm overseas, I'm military overseas and, and I need to get rid of this right away. Or I'm getting a divorce and I don't want my wife to get this, my ex-wife to get this. So I'm selling it at a really cheap price. But you call. And again, who, who, who wouldn't like to get a, a good deal? We'd all like to get a good deal. And you find this car that, say you have a car that's worth $20,000, but right then on Craigslist it's for $10,000 and they want to get rid of it. And you call and they said, hey, yep, it's available. Well, can I come and see it? No. I, you can't, I'm overseas and, and, but, but I got a buddy, you can send it to him and you can send him the money and then we'll ship you the car. He'll get you all the, all your information. If you're not interested, that's okay. I got five people waiting. And then of course they want to jump on it. So they send the money without going to see it, without kicking the tires, if you will. Earlier this year had a gentleman lost $80,000 to an RV. 
He thought he was getting this RV. He never went to go see it. He was out of the Cedar Rapids area and he lost $80,000. Always deal locally, always deal face to face, always go and test drive something before, before you send money. Number eight, always take the time to go through your, your credit card statements, through your bank card statements, always take the time to go through them every month with a fine tooth comb. If there's anything out of whack, you take care of it right away. Last year I had, again, here I, I, I tell people to do it. I wasn't looking at my, my, my bank account. And one day I went back and noticed that my bank account was low and noticed that three months, a company had taken $200 each month out of my account. And I didn't even know. And I'm, I, I was able to get it reversed, but just think if I wouldn't have checked, they would have continued to take $200 out. And who knows what my bank account would have looked like if I would have waited another six months. So always take the time to go through your credit card statements and your bank statements. Number nine, remember, number nine, double check, double check, double check. Again, I can't say it enough. Double check. Take the time to, and by double checking, I'm tell, I'm saying if you're gonna uh, have some come someone come and remodel your home, or, or do some construction on your home, or some call some people, check out the BBB, a ask ask them if they can give you some some uh, some people to call as references, or if it's a company you want to deal with, check the BBB again. Call our office. Call the local library. Call a friend. Always take the time to double check. And number 10, remember the big three. And, and I, can't, I can't say this with more emphasis, than, but if you're ever, ever in a situation and there's fear, there's excitement, or there's a situation that pulls at your heartstrings and they're asking for money, and asking for money in ways that, like I mentioned, there's no safeguards for you and they want it now, it's a scam. Again, definitely a scam. One of the reasons that we do this, that we, that we go out and talk to people like this, is that we want to let you know that you have friends at the Iowa Attorney General's office, that, that, that there are people here who, who care and, and are there to, to either assist you, answer questions. Um, and I tell folks, you know, if you get a call, you can say, you know what, I have a friend. And his name's Al Perales, and he works for the Iowa Attorney General's office. You're calling me today. Um, is there any way I can get your name and your 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 address of your company? Deed. They hang up on you. So use me. Use my name. And I, I always tell people if if you have an issue, you have a problem, call Al because he's your pal. And my number, it, it's in the, it's in the little booklet there. My direct line is five one five two eight one. 6413, 515-281-6413. Again, if you ever have a problem situation, feel free to give me a call anytime. Um, also, since we were little, firefighters taught us to do three things, right? They taught us to do three things, to stop, drop, and roll. Well, as fraud fighters, as fraud fighters, we want you to stop, think, and call that if you're ever in one of these situations that I mentioned, a fear, excitement, pulling at your heartstrings and they're asking for money that you stop, that you hang up. I'm not interested. And you think, you know what? I remember that day when there was a gentleman, a goofy looking gentleman from the Iowa attorney general's office that came to speak to us about scams. And he told us if I'm ever in a situation where there's fear, excitement, or a situation that pulls at my heartstrings and they're asking for money right now, it's a scam. And you call our office, you let us know. And, and again, our, our number's in, uh, in that little pamphlet. But I appreciate the time um, here today. I hope you enjoyed it and, and we're gonna take questions here. So if anybody has any questions, we'll be happy to, to answer, answer any questions you may have.